Hello, I'm Ray Vincent, Senior Associate Chaplain at the University of South Wales. And on behalf of the chaplaincy, let me wish you all a very happy Easter. This is a time of year that lifts our spirits. Winter is coming to an end, spring seems to be on the way. And this year, of course, there's a special meaning for it because after a year of pandemic and lockdown, things really do seem to be about to get better. For Christians, this is the celebration of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. It means that life overcomes death, that death can never have the last word. And because Jesus stands for love, and it was love that led him to lay down his life, it means that love overcomes hate. So I invite you to join me in a short act of celebration for Easter. Jesus says, do not be afraid. I am the first and the last and the living one. I was dead and look, I am alive forever and ever. Let us pray. God of glory, by the raising of your Son, you have broken the chains of death and hell. Fill your people with faith and hope. For a new day has dawned, and the way to life stands open in our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. And now we're going to hear a traditional Easter hymn, Christ the Lord is risen today, hallelujah. You may want to join in wherever you are, with other people or by yourself. Just feel free to sing along and celebrate. Christ the Lord is risen today. Let's hear the story of that first Easter morning as Luke tells it. On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they entered, 
they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He is risen. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee, the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men, be crucified, and on the third day be raised again. Then they remembered his words. When they came back from the tomb, they told all these things to all the others. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the others with them, who told this to the apostles. But they did not believe the women, because their words seemed to them to be like nonsense. Peter, however, got up and ran to the tomb. Bending over, he saw the strips of linen lying by themselves, and he went away, wondering to himself what had happened. That first morning was mysterious, puzzling, frightening, and at the same time, exciting. When we read the stories in the Bible, it's surprising how low-key they are. The story we've just read from Luke tells us that the men didn't believe the women. They took no notice of what the women said, except that Peter went to the tomb and looked in and came away wondering what had happened. John says that Jesus only appeared to one woman, Mary Magdalene, and she thought he was the gardener. Mark ends his story on an even lower keynote. He says that the women were frightened and they ran away from the tomb and for a time they didn't tell anybody because they were afraid. It was only later, bit by bit, that the disciples had experiences that convinced them more and more that Jesus was alive. As we celebrate Easter today, there's no surprise. We've heard the stories many times before. The resurrection for us is all mixed up with the coming of spring, longer days, warmer weather, spring flowers, newborn lambs and so on. It's a lovely time, but it's predictable. It happens every year. But the experience of the friends of Jesus was not predictable. They were devastated. And what happened was the last thing they could expect. In some ways, our friends in South America, Australia or New Zealand are able to come a bit closer to the real meaning of Easter. For them, Easter doesn't mean lighter evenings, daffodils and newborn lambs. It comes as winter approaches and the days get shorter and colder. And in the face of all that appearance of death, it declares that life has the victory. Many people in this past year have been devastated by the loss of loved ones. Where is the resurrection for them? Their loved ones won't literally come back to them. All we can say is that many people have testified to the presence of the loving God in their lives, bringing hope even in the darkest times. It can happen in small ways. Maybe an experience of peace in prayer. Maybe one of those lovely mornings when you look out and think that life is worth living after all. Maybe some simple, unexpected act of kindness from a neighbour. Maybe something not even recognisable at the time, but somehow the conviction comes back that life wins. The friends of Jesus never knew when he would come to them. Two of them met him as a stranger on the road on that Sunday evening. For others, he came as they huddled together in a room with the doors locked because they were so afraid. Thomas wasn't there, and he had to wait another agonising week before Jesus came for him. For some of them, he came on the shores of Galilee some time later, when they'd returned to their fishing and probably given up hope of seeing him again. The resurrection is not regular and predictable like the spring. It's God's joyful surprise. Jesus comes to show himself to us when we least expect it, and yet... He is there all the time. He said, I am with you always, 
even to the end of the world. Let us pray. Our God, we thank you that in Jesus you have lived among us, showing us your love and pointing us to your glorious kingdom. We thank you that he gave himself unsparingly for us, sharing our suffering, dying and conquering death, and opening the way to eternal life. We pray for all those who today mourn the loss of a loved one. We pray for those who are in pain, anxiety, fear or loneliness. For those who want to believe and find it hard. For those who find that your presence eludes them. Bless them and reveal yourself to them. Help us all to hold on in faith, hope and love and to know that we are part of your eternal and unfailing purpose in this world. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now we have a hymn that celebrates the resurrection as a reality in the life of today. As the second verse puts it, Christ is alive, no longer bound to distant years in Palestine, but saving, healing, here and now, and touching every place and time. Eternal God, whose Son Jesus Christ is the way, the truth and the life, grant us to walk in his way, to rejoice in his truth and to share his risen life, who is alive and reigns now and forever. And the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.